Hello, everyone. Welcome to the course, Advanced English Conversation Two. Today, we are going to talk about giving the guest a tour. Giving the guest a tour. I'm your teacher, Julia. Today, we start. Before we start the lesson, we are going to talk about cultural note. That's something we should bear in mind before we take our guests to go to any of the tour in the future. You might face a few things you need to bear in mind. Maybe you like to take them to go to see the factory, or the office, or some of the trade shows in Taiwan. So here is something you're going to remember that from trade shows to factory floors and into the office, your guests need to be showing around. Given a tour may seem trivial. But there are many things to remember. First, you will want to make sure your guests see everything they come to see. You should also know how to introduce and talk up the important people they will meet on the tour. For example, some of the managers or the person they will bring you a lot of business, or some of the keymans, or their families. Make the experience as pleasurable as possible by knowing how it is done. Not just only like that, but also we're gonna to see some of the vocabulary in the following for this lesson. One. Lack. Lack means to not have or not have enough of something that is needed or wanted. For example, your biggest problem is that you lack confidence, or there is a phrase, "be lacking in." Be lacking in. Your biggest problem is that your lacking in confidence will be the same. Two, essential. Essential means necessary or needed. Here is a good example. Previous experience is essential for the position. Three, research. Research means a detailed study of a subject, especially in order to discover new information or reach a new understanding. For example, study law or study science. The verb before research we might use do. For instance, do research. Conduct. Conduct research. Carry out research into something. Here is a good example. Scientists carry out research into the cause of each one in one. Four. Ambivalent. Ambivalent means have two opposing feelings at the same time, or being uncertain about how you feel. To me, I have ambivalent feelings when I don't have much preparation. Here is a good example. You seem to feel ambivalent about your new job. For a lot of new comer to go to. Go to work in the society after graduate graduation. You might face the problem as well. Five, skip. Skip means to move lightly or quickly, make a small jump after each step. For example, we'll have to skip the next chapter because we don't have much time. Or if you are the tour guide, if you don't have much time, you may skip some of the area not to travel, and then you can save much time to for the best. Six, impatient. Impatient means easily annoyed by someone's mistakes or because you have to wait. For in instance, 
I was waiting for 20 minutes before I got impatient. 7. Accelerate. Accelerate means speed up. For instance, we use chemicals to accelerate the growth of crops. Crops such as grains, oatmeal, things like that. Or inflation continues to accelerate. That hurt a lot in market. 8. Pace. Pace means the speed at which someone or something moves or with which something happens or changes. Here is a good example. 1. It is difficult to keep up with the rapid pace of change. For instance, knowing how to use computer is different from learning how to use computer. Another good ex example. You can learn at your own pace by using this teaching software. Your own pace means that your own speed. 9. In pacing. In pacing means talking about something else it's not the main subject of a conversation. For instance, Mike only mentioned it in pacing and didn't give any details. So for example, Mike doesn't care about the details, so he just only to in pacing some of the uh, major issue. That's it. Next, let's move to the cultural notes. Here are something we need to remember and bear in mind. Tips for showing guests around. As a tour guide or the key man in a company, we should look for some of the keys. First, giving a successful tour is to know your guests and to know your sites. If you lack basic or essential knowledge about either or the things, be sure to get as much information as possible as soon as you can. Do your research. So study about the area or study about your guests. That's the first thing and priority to do before you lead a tour. At the beginning of the tour, it is always a good idea to ask your guess exactly what they are most interested in seeing or hearing about. For instance, in Taiwan, we have a lot of famous scenic sites or attractions for tour to visit, such as 101 Tower, Palace Museum in Taipei, or Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall. So you should study or do some research to ask your guests where are the places they like to visit? Next, if you are ambivalent, then your job is much easier. If you know what they want to see, means your guests want to see. Make sure you know it to the guests as really as possible. For instance, if most of the guests wanted to see 101 Tower in Taipei, make sure you show them 101 Tower as completely as possible. Also, be sure not to skip too quickly through parts of the tour your guests are particularly interested in. Some of the guests wanted to see the central part of Taiwan, so it's a good idea or you may save much time not to travel completely in Taipei. You can skip some of the area or scenic sites in Taipei and drive them to go to the Taichung area or Kaohsiung area 
if your guest wanted to see more about the island wide. Last, give your guest opportunity to control the path and focus off the tour at every step. Ask your guests if they wanted to see enough of the places you visit. So here give us a lot of ideas how to control the past and focus something the guest really wanted to see. And you will win their hearts and they will travel to back to here again. Some of the sentences you might practice and ask your guests. Have you seen enough here? Or can we move on? Would you like to move on to the next area? Or do you have any other questions about this part of the tour before we continue? So if your guests seem impatient or bored, it may be best to accelerate your path. That is to say, if you feel any of the guests don't want to wait or see more around 101 Tower, maybe it's time for us to move on. It may be best to skip some of the area or certain parts or to mention them briefly in passing. So if some of the guests don't want to see the central part of Taiwan or some of the area they don't want to get off the car or the tour bus, so we may just remain in the seats on the bus and just briefly mention about the area and the history of the scenic sites when we see the area. Next one, we can focus in on the sentence pattern about controlling the tour. So if we only have 10 minutes left before we go to, we go to have a lunch, we might say, I think we have seen enough here. Or we can just skip through this area unless there is something that interests you. After lunch, we might come back here. Or you may say that, not much to see here. Furthermore, I think you will like next area. Last, I think it's time we saw the next section. So just directly take your guests to go to take the lunch. That's review and practice now. And thank you for listening. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.